Hi, welcome to Drawing Club. Today we're drawing Chomp and Chuck. This is Chomp and Chuck, and to draw Chomp and Chuck, you will need a pencil, an eraser to erase any mistakes, uh, maybe a pencil sharpener, and a black pencil crayon or a black marker to outline when you're finished drawing with your pencil, and maybe some markers or some coloring pencils to color him in with. But to start with, I'm going to use my gray marker as usual, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so Chomp and Chuck has a big round face. We're gonna start with that. We're just gonna make a big, filling up a whole bunch of the page, a big round, face. Just like that. And then inside that we're going to put another uh, big round kind of oval shape for his mouth. And remember if I'm drawing too quickly you can always pause the video and catch up. There we go. And, oops, I'll finish that. Actually no, I'm I'm not going to. We're going to draw the pizza next. Um, so let's do this triangle for the pizza. I'm going to do a line down there, a line, kind of a curving line. This piece of pizza is a bit like floppy. And then another one like that. Okay, and that's that piece of pizza going into his mouth. Um, let's do Chuck's eyes next. So Chuck's got two eyes. They're quite far up on his head because we're looking up at him. He's looking down at us. So we're going to put his eyes further up on his head than we would normally put them. So just two circles like that. And then for the uh, inside part of his eye, just a couple of little circles like this. I'm sort of, we're looking kind of up Chuck's nose, which is a little bit gross. So he's got a kind of a bit of a upturned nose here. It's gonna look like this. And then we're gonna look right up his nostrils. So these two sort of bean shapes here. When I was drawing or designing um, Chomp and Chuck, I was thinking about um, some of my favorite characters by an artist called Quentin Blake, who did all of the pictures for um, Roald Dahl's books, things like The Twits and George's Marvelous Medicine, and so I was thinking a little bit about him when I designed this character. He, he draws really great, gross little characters. Okay, so let's put in the teeth next. So we'll put in these big, kind of um, rounded looking teeth. Just like this. Another one over here. And then one, there's four teeth and we're going to space them out in the top and then uh, another four in the bottom here. And there's going to be some sort of gross little bits of food stuck between them that we'll draw after we've drawn the teeth. And there we go. And one more over here near that slice of pizza. Just like that. We'll put his ears on next, so he's got these two little pointy ears. He's kind of a bit of a an ogre type of character, so he's got these little pointed ears. So I'm going to do these little curving lines like this, and then a little curving line for the, um, the ear hole. And then the same on the other side. Just uh, curving wavy lines for these ears. And then a little curve for the inside of the ear. And then I have uh, given him some sort of, uh, <laughs> some gross little nose hairs poking out here. Because we're looking right up his nose. Here we go. Just like that. Okay. And next let's do, let's put that book in. So he's holding up a book in front of him. We're going to talk. Uh, when we're inking him a little bit about why this is probably not a very good idea. But he's got a book with him right now while he's eating. So we're just going to draw a kind of a, a square shape or a rectangle shape like that for, for one cover of the book. 
and then some curving lines for the spine of the book. The spine is this middle part here. And then the other cover of the book right here. And then we'll put the hands in, I think, um, next. So he's got two fingers on each of his kind of ogre hands. So there's one, and there's the other. And then he has uh, big long nails. So I'm just gonna make some curving lines to show he's got those nails there. And then he's got a kind of a shaggy, hairy arm. So I'm just gonna put some zigzag lines to show where his arm is there. And we'll do the same on the other side. He's got two sort of thick sausage uh, ogre fingers here. Just like that. And then the nails coming out of them. Okay. And next, I think we will put in the rest of the pages of the book, just so we can see that they're that the book does have pages. So I'm just gonna follow along the same shape as I made for the cover of the book and just put the pages in like that. Do the same on the other side. Following along. Just like that. Okay, now what am I missing? Oh yeah, so he has a kind of a beard sort of an uh, I put it I made it an orange kind of a beard he's got a sort of a beard so I'm just going to add some curving shapes on this side to show that he's got hair coming out of the side of his face there and I'll do the same on the other side just like this okay and let's start putting in those nice little gross funny details. So I'm going to start by putting in these um, little shapes that show that he's got food sticking between his teeth and falling out of his mouth as he chomps away on that pizza. You know, another thing you've probably heard before is that we're supposed to chew with our mouths shut because it's a little bit gross to see everything that's inside somebody's mouth when they're eating. So when I was small, my mother always used to remind me, you know what, you have to make sure that you you chew with your mouth closed so everyone uh, doesn't have to see what's in your mouth and that you don't accidentally start spitting food out, which is what's happening here. He's a little too excited about eating that pizza and uh, he should have uh, taken his time and closed his mouth and chewed properly. There are all of these little bits of food <laughs> flying all over the place. And there's one coming out of the side of his mouth there. And then there's a big blob of um, cheese from that pizza slice that's got stuck right on the top of the book there and a little blob there. And then there's a big splat over here of tomato sauce from the pizza. Just there. And then I'm going to put on those uh, little uh, details right onto the pizza. So there was some pepperoni slices. So there's one and another one up here. So I'm just making a circle and then adding a little line to the side to make it look more 3D. And then there was a little mushroom there and a few little pieces of green pepper on his pizza. And then the crust, I'll do a circle here at the side for the crust. And a circle on that side and then make join them together to make the crust and then the cheese i'm just going to do a kind of a wavy line to show that this is a melty cheese here at the top okay and i think that might be all the details i need maybe i'll just give a the idea that his arm is over here oh and i think i, I forgot a part the bottom part of his arm should have been down here too there we go. And I think that's maybe all the details I need to do with my pencil. So you can uh, switch over now. If you've been, you should have been using your pencil, you can switch over to your black marker or your black pencil crayon to outline with.
and I'll do the same. So we're just going to follow our lines again and go over the top. And just pay attention, there's a lot of lines in this one where I'm not going to trace over them because there are things that are behind other things, and so I wouldn't want to trace over um, all of my lines because some of them should be hidden. And when we erase the pencil lines at the end of the drawing, everything should look nice and where it's supposed to be. So uh, Chomp and Chuck here, you know, he really likes to read and he, uh, he goes to the library at his school or he just goes to the public library in, in town and he likes to take books out. But the librarian has had to remind him a few times about, um, you know, what are some important things you should know about taking good care of books? Because... Unfortunately, Chomp and Chuck sometimes returns books and they're not in the perfect condition that they were in when he took them out. And so the librarian um, told him, you know, there's really six things that are very important to remember um, about using library books. And uh, of course, one of those things is that when you take the books out, you know, you have to bring them back. And usually the library... Uh, the librarian will tell you how long you have the book out for. So sometimes, you know, if you go to the um, the library, they might say that you have to bring this book back in two weeks or maybe in three weeks, or it can depend on uh, which kind of library it is. And then sometimes you're able to do something called renew the book. So um, sometimes if I have a book out and I didn't have a chance to read it yet, I can check on the internet um, and find out if, or I can ask the librarian at the library, you know, does anybody else want this book yet? And if nobody else wants it yet, then I can renew it and I can keep it for another few weeks. Um, but, you know, you have to, you do have to bring it back when you're finished with it. And um, you also have to bring it back on time so that other people can use the books. Sometimes the library might only have one copy of a book. And if lots of people want it, then it's important to bring it back so that other people can read it. Um... Another thing she told him was, you know, re be careful about the uh, the pages in the book and don't um, fold them or make what they call dog ears on the pages. And so you might have seen this before sometimes if somebody is reading a book and then they fold a corner of the page because they want to leave a mark where they're reading. But that's um, it's really not a good thing to do. It, it, it uh, kind of ruins the book. And uh, the next person who's reading might be a little bit annoyed by the fact that that part's folded because that's not where they read to. Um, so it's much better to use a bookmark or even just take a little sticky note or a piece of paper and put that in the book in the place where you've read to. And that's what I always do. I never fold the corners of my books. And you might have noticed um, from coming, if you've come to Drawing Club before here um, online, the internet version of Drawing Club, that um, when I introduce each video, I'm usually sitting right in front of my bookshelves, and I have a lot of books in my house, and I try to take good care of them. So that was another thing that she told him, you know, um, just try to make sure that you don't bend the pages. Um, another thing that the librarian said was that she said, you know, Chuck, if you see that there's already some damage to the book. You know, if, if there's a, a problem, maybe if the, the spine of the book is a little bit broken or it's, or it's bent, or if a page has been torn, you know, um, tell the librarian because librarians are very good at um, fixing books. They can use some tape or they can use other, other things like glues and things to fix up the books. So if you notice that a book is getting a bit worn out, then, you know, you should let the librarian know. Um, so even if even if you didn't do it, but maybe you're just looking at a book in the library and you notice that, oh, there's a, there's a page that's going to fall out, then just let the librarian know. Um, you're not going to get in trouble because it's not your fault. And the librarian will be happy that you showed her that the book had a problem and that maybe she or, or if the librarian's a man, he can fix it. Another very important rule that the librarian said for when you take a book home is not to get it wet because there's nothing worse than a soggy book and then the pages, when they dry, they go all wrinkly and weird and it's really hard to read the book. And 
And that's happened to my books sometimes um, just because I was, you know, I had to go out in the rain for some reason and I shouldn't have had my books with me, but maybe they were in my bag and my bag got wet in the rain and then my books got wet. And, and so if you can avoid it, if you, if you can not do it, it's really good to not take books out into the rain or into places where they're going to get wet. You know, you never take a book into the bathtub with you because then it's definitely going to get soggy. So another important uh, message or another important um, kind of rule for taking good care of books. Don't take them in the rain. Don't take them in a place they're going to get wet and soggy. Um, another thing that the librarian told Chuck, you know, there was lots of things for Chomp and Chuck to remember. Maybe that's why he forgot one of them. Um, but, you know, he should have been paying attention to all of them. Um, but he was told that, you know, don't bend the books. Don't, like this part here, the spine, um, if you are bending and twisting the spine too much, then that's how the pages can start to get loose and how the pages can start to fall out. Um, so, you know, just treat, treat books gently. There's no, there's no reason you would need to bend or twist a book. Um, so just treat them like you would treat a, a soft little hamster or something that you wouldn't want to hurt. Treat the book the same way. Just be very gentle. There's the beard. And of course, can you guess which of the, there's one more very important rule, uh, that, the librarian told Chomp and Chuck all about, um, which is the one that he completely forgot about. Yeah. So the last and most important rule uh, is you don't eat when you're reading. And we can see exactly why in this picture of Chomp and Chuck. We can see that he has, you know, probably what happened was he was reading the book and got to a really exciting part but he was also really hungry because, you know, Chomp and Chuck is a big guy. He does like to eat. And so really, if he had listened carefully to the librarian, he would have remembered, oh, oh, what I need to do is I need to go put my book down and then I can go eat my snack or eat my lunch. And then when I'm done, I'll go back and keep reading after I wash my hands. But instead, what you can see here is that Chomp and Chuck just went ahead and he decided to eat that big, sloppy, greasy piece of pizza full of melty cheese and squishy sauce. And he just ate it all up while he was reading the book. And all of these bits and blobs and splats of food came flying out of his mouth and got stuck all over the book. And of course, what's going to happen when the next person gets that book? Well, one, it might not smell very nice, actually if it's covered in bits of uh, stinky old cheese. But another thing is the books are, or the pages of the book are probably going to be all stuck together. That's why, for example, something like a jam sandwich um, is a terrible thing to eat while you're holding a book because jam is so sticky and it gets, it glues the pages together. But really any food is bad to eat when you're reading a book because food, even something like simple like a cookie, Cookie crumbs often have a lot of oil in them, a lot of, um, and they can make these oily little marks on the pages that are, that are kind of gross and annoying if you're somebody like me who loves books. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple of little shading marks or little lines onto the teeth there. And I think we're going to call um, Chomp and Chuck done. So let's take back the original picture of Chomp and Chuck. And here he is. And you can see he's got his uh, greasy slimy, sloppy piece of pizza there that he's chomping on. And I did that yellow and red for the um, pepperoni and some green for the green pepper. I gave the made the book green. And then we've got the uh, red um, tomato sauce and the yellow mozzarella cheese. And I made him blue because he's sort of an ogre. And then orange. And then gave us orange nostrils because it, I don't know, it seemed funny to me. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk more about taking care of books in uh, one of our weeks, um, or one of our next week's lessons. So um, we'll be coming back to this topic again. All right. Uh, thanks so much for coming today. And uh, I hope you had a good time.